So hi, um, I'm going to talk about Web Meets Text Desktop, producing OGC API features layers from Django ORM. I hope that's going to be clear after that small talk. Uh, my name is Daniel Rousseau. Daniel Rousseau. Uh, my username is Troni. That's a kind of a French joke, but uh, because my name is Danny, so two, three, anyway. I'm a QGIS core developer for about 12 years, and I'm with OpenGIS for seven years. We're um, a company dedicated to open source. We're located in Switzerland. We work a lot on QGIS, and we're the developers, uh, creators of QField and QField Cloud. Um, we're ISO certified. Uh, yeah. That's our team. We're, as I said, mainly located in Switzerland. Um, we're like, we have, have a few people abroad, but uh, the majority of us is in Switzerland. We are fully remote. And that's it for the introduction. So I'm going to talk about um, limitations we faced currently with SIG database approach and the idea of using Django ORM to hold the business logic and use that in QGIS or any client through OGC API features. I'll take um, a small uh, example for uh, illustrating the approach. And I'm going to take uh, a water network and basically pipes and valves. And the idea is that if you have a valve on the pipe, um, closing the valve will close the pipe, opening the valve will close the pipe will open the, the pipe, though that's the closed status of the pipe needs to be updated depending on the valve. So that's the small um, business logic I need to implement in this use case, and that's what I'm going to show. So first, uh, the, the DB approach, I have a small video to illustrate the idea of what we're doing, but I think it's quite clear. Whenever you close the pipe, the valve, sorry, the pipe will get closed and should turn in red anyway. But I think that's quite clear. Good? Good. So how do we do that usually? With PostGIS uh, database and we have a pipe table, a valve table, and um, we have in there some functions. Here one to assign the valve to the pipe when you create it. And the one that's interesting for us, the one that will close or open the pipe depending on the change status of the valve. So that's basically here. That's readable, yeah. So uh, the pipe will get closed whenever the change, uh, the valve is changing. What are the limitations we have currently with these uh, approaches? That's very common to use that, but... Um, the, the PostGIS database, we've implemented a lot of solutions like that, but for bigger um, solutions, we are facing issues. First, the version control and change management is super challenging because for anything you bring to, any change you bring to the data model, you need to produce delta and you don't have access to a direct uh, source code. The, the complete SQL is an artifact, but you don't have a single source code of what you have. That's um, subject to personal feeling, but for us, SQL has a poor code readability. You don't have any ID to, to develop in it, so it's kind of complex, but that's personal. Unit testing is seldom implemented. It's possible to do it, but what we observe is that it's not often as well made as in if you're using another language. If you have pure SQL, the unit testing is usually quite poor. And doing integration tests are, is also a bit complicated or more complicated. And next point, which maybe is the more important, the modularization or the customization of data models is complex. If you have this water network, for instance, you have a client who wants a feature, but the other one, another one, how do you deal with that? And custom implementations, it's, it's a bit hard to get modules that you can have. 
So what is the idea with that? So we have our data that is, will still be in PostGIS and how can we interact from the client? What can we put in there? And from the title, you know what where I'm going. So the idea is to use Django, Django ORM and use it through uh, OGC API features. So maybe I have a first question to feel about the, the room here. Who knows Django and has maybe implemented or using the ORM? Good. Who never heard about Django? Okay. And who know OGC API features? Who knows? Good. So that's quite clear, yeah. Okay, so Django is basically a Python-based web framework. It's designed to produce web uh, endpoints or pages that's fully web. It's, uh, you have an ORM, so it's, uh, ob you have an object-oriented approach, which is quite interesting for holding the business logic. That's why we're going there. The data can still be held in the DB, so in this case, PostgreSQL and PostGIS. We have GeoDjango for all the GIS uh, features. So in the ORM, we also have access to the GIS features and not only in the database. Migrations come for free. So that's something super interesting for us is that whenever you change something in the, the business logic, the migration of the database will be, um, the, the deltas will be produced by Django uh, automatically and you don't have anything to do except call the migrate. And we have many features that also come with Django like authentication system. So anything that you would need to implement in, in QGIS or in a plugin, they're already there. It's a huge ecosystem that uh, have all that. And even yeah, like um, what is the the models? It's basically the objects. You have also you can have um, class based object based permissions. So it's easy to say this user can modify that. This user, this other user can modify that, and have it like that. And modularization is also um, quite easy. You can have um, sub applications that will extend or play with the main model. Like you can add extra fields that will be for only this client and other field for the other one and even some logic in there. And all that is um, automatically handled and you don't have, it's kind of hassle free almost. It's never, but it's way better than with uh, Postgres. So how does that look like in Django? Basically, it's a Python code. I have my pipe object and some attributes. That's um, pretty simple. An ID, which is a UID, my closed status, which is a Boolean, and a geometry, which is a line string. I give it a um, SRID, and that's, that's about it. Valve, uh, the same. And now, um, how does that look? Here, I have in my save method, I say that uh, I'm going to update the pipe if um, if by counting all the valves that are on it, if I have any uh, closed uh, valve, the pipe will be closed. So that's uh, that's how it works. And you can play from the command line and calling the, the API directly. So importing the models, creating my points for my pipe, creating the geometry, creating the pipe. So it's calling this uh, pipe create with the geometry, the SRID, and I'm getting the ID from the created object. Same for the valve. And now I look at the status of my pipe, it's closed. Now I close my valve, save it, and now my pipe should be printed, is now closed. Pretty simple. 
So now, okay, cool, we have this API that works for my business logic, but how do I uh, play with that in QGIS or somewhere else? So the idea is to use OGC API features because mainly um, in Django, we have something called REST framework, which is already there. And OGC API is based on open, um, OGC API features are based on open API uh, REST framework. So that's very close. So we've actually, um, maybe I'm gonna, so that that's how it looks, um, get items for an uh, OGC API feature layer. You have two features in that layers and it's basically JSON features. Okay. So what do we do is that we have created a Django application based on the Django REST framework to extend it to be fully compliant with OGC API features. That's what we've called Django OAPIF. And now maybe you think for those who knows about PyGeo API, why we are not using PyGeo API? Why? Because PyGeo API is a simple um, converter, say it like that, of an existing uh, data source, be it CSV, JSON, PostgreSQL, whatever you want. But if we use that and we connect it directly to the database, then we lose all the business logic that we are holding in the ORM. So we need to connect to the ORM and not to the database. And that's why we use this um, Django REST framework to produce the OGC API features layer so that it exposes the, the ORM objects. Because all that triggers, if you update something on the database directly by, by uh, uh, SQL, the triggers won't be called because they're all in the data in the DRM. If I go back to that, uh, sorry, it's a bit far. I need to interact with the Python objects and not directly to the database. Otherwise, the the, met, the method from before won't be called. I'm going back to where I was. So this Django uh, OAPIF, it's a Python Django application. It's open source based on MIT and it's supposed to be quite simple. It provides a, sim a decorator, Python decorator that you can put on top of your model and it will automatically produce the OGC API endpoints. That's how it looks like. I just add this at register OAPIF view set and should be about it. So it's a one line thing on top of the ORM. And that's the response I have um, now on my um, endpoints. So I have the two layers, pipe and valves, and I can go to the items and I see the valves with their coordinates and their status. And if I use that now in QGIS, that's uh, basically how it looks. It's a bit the same. I change the status and that's updated. The mouse went to save, so that's only on save that the change was um, uh, effective. So um, Django APF, it allows interaction with Django models through web services. It brings all the power tools of Django, like what I've said before, certification, user management, huge ecosystem of well-maintained packages. And also one good point is that basically you get a web application next to it. So it opens the door for super nice interaction for the user that would be a bit not super nice in QGIS, so you would do a plugin, but maybe it's better to go through the web. For instance, Django uh, admin comes for free and you have uh, the user management there. The, you have forms that are directly there uh, to show the, um, the features and the layers. So you can even have a map quickly on the, uh, for that. So that's already available. 
Uh, that's an example of uh, an application for electricity where you have tubes, cables, and um, and you see the cables, for instance, that are in the tubes. So that's a, a graph produced from uh, the Django app. That's web, but basically I click on QGIS and on my um, on a point, and I see the profile here popping up in a web uh, browser. So we're super happy because it's super nice, but of course we have some issues, otherwise that would be too easy. And the main issue we are facing is the performance. Here is a, a layer with, I think it's the um, committees in Switzerland showing up, so polygons with a couple of thousands uh, entries, and you see the time it takes to load, and that progress bar is not super nice looking. Basically, um, it's not performant because all uh, the object needs to be serialized to go through GeoJSON. Obviously, GeoJSON is not the best thing you want to do to share thousands of polygons, but uh, that's the way the, the norm is, and we have to play with it. So. That's a small graph showing the trend uh, of the time it takes to fetch the features. So basically it's quite um, logic. You have a, a threshold and then it gets linear. So you don't want to fetch hundreds or thousands of uh, features that are complex. And the lines here, this is the polygons, lines and points basically. Um, yeah, that's what I said about the performance. The, that comes from the serialization, the format, and also that QGIS is not optimized yet, yet for that kind of things. And mainly the, the issue we have with the attribute table, I didn't show the attribute table, but it's even worse because the attributes table is not paginated. OGC API features are paginated, so you get first 100 features, go to the next page and so on. But the attribute table, table what does it do? It waits for all, all the, um, the features to be loaded. So you go request, fetch 100 features, request again, and you get QGIS frozen until it's done. So that's uh, quite ineffective. Um, we've made some improvements by moving the serialization from the Django RM into the DB, so let's PostGIS do the GeoJSON uh, serialization. That's quite more efficient. We gain about, I think, twice the time, but still we're not in the range of, we're, we'll never get close to whatever we can have with uh, PostGIS direct connection. We have some other um, um, ideas how to to improve the performance we have another framework that can be used instead of uh, the rest framework which is uh, django ninja which is a bit different but not at the same state uh, so it's not fully compliant yet with open api so we cannot directly move to it but the performance is supposed to be much better and the other um point would be to improve the user experience in QGIS. So yeah, there's some polishing to be done on the data provider to remove that progress bar. Um, the refactoring of the attribute table, uh, that's a long standing refactoring that wants to want to that we want to do in QGIS. But uh, it's a super complex um, project that needs a few of the main QGIS developers and that's um, that's not for tomorrow. And the other idea would be to use something else that GeoJSON, but um, that's the norm, which is based on GeoJSON. So that would be kind of a hack. And the other, maybe by bypass it. So basically for the attribute table, we could say, okay, let's not use the QGIS attribute table for our use case and we go directly, we open the web for browsing the the features and uh, and showing the form that's that's a um, a possible solution 
So in the end, um, it's super promising, but have some uh, kind of limitations. So it's the necessity of evaluating the use case. For some use case, if you don't have that many features, it can bring a lot of uh, uh, possibilities without that much of, uh, of issues. So big, big networks are not yet ready to be um, uh, developed on that technology. Um, huge potential at low cost because that's a bit the idea that it's super easy to develop using the Django RM rather than PostGIS. Again, that's a bit subjective. People with 20 years of coding in PostGIS, maybe they have a different vision, but that's, I think, a bit more modern to code in, in Python. And finally, the code is uh, open to anyone, so feel free to test it, ask for more, and uh, contribute. Final thanks to the three Swiss committees that have sponsored this uh, project for uh, a proof of concept for uh, an electrical network. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Dennis, for your beautiful uh, presentation. You showed us the capabilities of any kind of integration. So the question, please, from the audience. Yes. Um, I have a question uh, about the um, features in Kukas. So you changed the valves to the closed state, and at least in your presentation, the um, lines also changed their color, but I assume this is not something that happens automatically. Um, I assume that the lines are not fetched with their new status automatically. Or is that the case? It's automatic because I have a layer dependency. Mm -hmm. So the line layer is watching the in cookies. You said that the line layers needs to be refreshed on any oh. change on the valve layer. So you change the valve. That's why the mouse went away from the screen. I click save. Uh -huh. It saves, commit, and then reload the line layer. So the color is changed. Okay. And is the whole layer reloaded or only the parts that need? All layer. Okay, so if you are zoomed out, it will take a while, but probably if you are zoomed in and you, yes. have, a, you have a bounding box, it's yeah. probably fast. Yes, the bounding box is working quite well for, uh, mm. that's also maybe one, one thing to mention, like you have also to optimize a bit your project. So if you have thousands of, of points, you don't want to show them at a very low scale and you only show them once you're zoomed in. So that would improve a lot the performance for the map viewing, but you will still have the issue in the attribute table. Yeah, actually we are using also the OGC RP and um, we found um, when we fetch the data as um, GeoJSON, we found out that a problem is rather the um, rendering in Kugis, so we can fetch the data faster than Kugis can render it. Okay. Actually, yeah. <laughs> with what kind of geometries? Uh, with points and polygons, lines, uh, we fetch them as GeoJSON and we have uh, a database that is then um, going through Entity Framework in our case. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So um, maybe the performance is rather in your Django framework and not necessarily in the um, OTC RP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the the serialization is done in in Django. That's the bottleneck. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Question. When you update the, the valve, you close or open, do you use a WFS transactional or? Mm, no, that's uh, post uh, to, that's the um, REST post. Yes, but uh, it's double, it's, uh, no, sorry, not WFS, it's OGC features. Yes. You use that? Okay. And um, I, I didn't really understand uh, your arguments to say that you need something in the middle, the ORM, because actually uh, using the uh, OGC features post, you can do everything that you are doing with your uh, business logic. 
So is it just to improve the developer experience or? The, the business logic is in the ORM. Yes, but uh, what, what I mean is uh, with OGC features, you can do directly the same things. With? With uh, post function, with the read function, or maybe my, uh, my understanding is not clear. You would put all the business logic in, because to me, OGC API features, you, it's only so it, it crude means operations. That it has to be consumed by uh, 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 an application. You provide yes. kind of an API. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's really API first. So, yeah, no, it's client agnostic. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, last, last one, please. Feel free to come um, later. Yeah. So thanks a lot. That's super interesting. Um, have you looked at the recent Django versions? Is it still not possible to use the Django ORM independent of the rest of the framework? Sorry, I didn't. So get... the the Django ORM yeah. is super interesting. Um, but sometimes I don't want to have the whole web framework around it, right? Just use the ORM part of it. Is it still difficult to? to do this? Have you looked into that or, or was it clear that you want to use Django anyway? I can't say because I'm not a Django expert. And in this case, since we're based on the, the REST framework, we need the web anyway. So I started to look at Django in this project. So I have pretty much no experience. Okay. But uh, maybe your last point is that uh, it's super nice to get into Django and it goes very quickly that you get your idea around it so yeah okay thank you thank, thank you, you. Denise, and the discussion